the club. Under blue moon I saw you So soon you'll take me Up in your arms Recording old songs, yeah. Um, I'd, some of the older recordings, um, the voice doesn't sound like me, you know. I'd, it's not even someone I, I even remember, in a way. At the time, it, everyone thought it was great. I did, you know, the singing. The, the music's perfect, more or less, I think, but it's, it's, like, it's like looking at an old photo where you think, God, you know, when did I stop being uncool and become slightly cooler? Um, it, I don't know, it just sounds... I just think some of the songs as well, they've grown with, with age, yeah. and people, people can't, like some fans get a bit too precious, I think, with, with things they grew up with. I grew up with the songs as well, and, and singing them live all the time, it's, it, it's not the same as when I sang them when I was 23 or whatever. It's, they mean something different to me, in a way. And The Killer Moon is still a mystery, you know, to most people, and, but whatever The Killer Moon is, it's getting closer, um, and so is fate. Under blue moon, I saw you So soon you'll take me Up in your arms too late to beg you Oh, cancer, though I know it must be The killing time <laughs> wow. What a question, you bad boy. Um, well, uh, lately I've been singing U2's praises because um, I realised it was stupid. You know, it's only... It's the persona that I didn't like. It's hard, I'd normally I'd have just said straight off Coldplay, um, but because of my new... Uh, number one U2 fan status. Um, and U2 have done it over 40 years. Um, I don't know how long Coldplay have been going, but that's probably 20 years easy. Um, I like them both the same, or equal. I saw Coldplay a few years ago at Man City's ground, you know, the Etihad. I understood watching that, why people like to wave things that glow or whatever. No, I didn't. I didn't wave mine, but <laughs> I could understand because it it does look good. But I, again, I just worry about that. I've never, well, very rarely said to an audience, "Are you okay?" or "How are you?" Because it's none of my business. You know, well, it is if I'm, I suppose, entertaining. But I, I just think when it gets too too much entertainment, uh, and most bands do it, I, you don't see a clip of the doors with people on phones or waving things. It's just the doors and, and it's fantastic. Oh, an ant. Uh, that'll be the next question. I hate ants. I normally just stand on it. Yeah. I hate insects. But uh, well, I think he got away. Favourite palace memory? Um, loads of them. First time we came here, Pete, the drummer, he'd, he'd been to Paris and he was saying how great it was. And, um, and then we arrived, we played the Bandouche. There it is. The Bandouche, which was a tiny club, you know, and a dead trendy, but they had bands on there as well. And, and I remember thinking, probably because I wanted. Well, I think people who, who went to that first gig loved us, but I wanted to be loved more, I think. So the Grand Rex was a great memory because it was our peak here and, and the gig was fantastic and the venue was brilliant. But we called an Ocean Rain at the end of 1983. We'd already done The Killer Moon and we recorded in what's the oh, Studio Day Dam in Rue de Dam. And I spent a lot of the time in the, in the bar opposite the front door of the studio, just getting into the thing, because it was my idea to come to Paris to record it, because I thought, it's you know, perfect. And a studio that I think PF 
where, where we did the strings was in a Davu. Tried to speak French whenever I could, you know, in bars. Usually, you know, beer or croc, madame. Oh, I just, I've always loved it here and uh, maybe I'll live here after. Um, okay. But yeah, there's, there's loads of them. Uh, some of them probably a bit naughty as well. Lou Reed or Leonard Cohen. Um, for different reasons, I can pick um, either of them. Lou Reed for t showing how you can play rhythm guitar and just get on with it with a few chords and do all that choppy. T for that and for for his attitude, I, I think, especially in the media, I. Th a, I don't know if you've seen the Lou Reed interview in Australia, 1974, with his yellow hair. Unbelievable. So, what do you spend your money on? Drugs. Do you take drugs? No. What do you do with them? I give them to people. <laughs> and then, so, you don't take drugs? Oh, no, I take drugs. And just everything was contradictory. And he lost some of the melody kind of skills he had when he was younger but most people do I think. I don't, however. Um, and then it was after, uh, Lou Reed came first out of the two of them. Uh, but I love Lonnie Cohen more. You know, as his songs can get me in, in a place that probably no one else can, you know. I thought that was my brother. But I it's not, don't worry. Um, Empty as a house with nothing in Just some DNA and blood lines Still empty as a house with nothing in Drugs and rock and roll um, Although the house seems empty, it's full of ghosts and it's, I'm still in the process of moving from, from this empty house and I'm trying to fill, and that's literally, I did move again um, last few weeks ago. Because when, <clears throat> when I'm at home, that's it, you know, just I don't want to see anyone particularly. And I need to, or I will want to see them and then just because I'm a lazy, so I'd, I'll kind of think of excuses why not to go around and see family, you know, it's, and that's a bit weird. Um, Need me Rennies, this juice. I am pretty simple, you know, uh, simple needs, really. I won't tell you with the football, of course. Whatever they may want, she will take the world. Every lie you've heard. First I'm gonna make it, then I'm gonna bring it to fall to fall. This is great. Have you done this? This is the technique. It's the best one. Best and worst of the 80s. Ooh. Bloody hell. Um, I think we were the best thing of the 80s. Along with, you know, some new order. Um, and a few others. The four. Um, what's your, what do you think? Worst of the 80s. Don't say us. There is no worst. Oh, there is Margaret Thatcher. The worst person ever. My epitaph. I once I told this to me, message or she found out. I used to I used to say, don't tell her you know, if I was drugging or whatever in the past. And so I was always, don't tell her in. Okay. And then um, I said to her, that's that's going on my grave, on my tombstone. Here lies, da da da, don't tell her in. That was great, I loved it. Yeah, but I'm going to have a cock with them now for lunch. <laughs>